the simplistic manifestation of miracles, the simplistic manifestation of miracles. I think, um, I think I saw Zakira. No, no, no. Was it Zakira? Who was it? Put about no. Keisha talked about living off and expecting miracles. What have you? And so she just segued right into that with a wonderful prophetic anointing itself. Segued right into where God is taking us today. Okay, the simplistic. Somebody go ahead and put that in the comment section. The simplistic manifestation of miracles, because you know what. People have made it seem as if miracles are so far-fetched, like it's something so extraordinary and something so profound that you only a few people get to experience, or you got to be in some heightened state of spiritual ecstasy to experience that, and it's not true, okay? So I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to use the word of God, and I'm going to I'm going to release an impartation through this message. You got to catch it so that you can tap into how to manifest these miracles, y'all, because there are some things that God wants to do, and I always say that because because that's always true. God wants to perform for you. God wants to release to you. You got, you got blessings held in store, spiritual uh, riches, you know, held. Come on, somebody. But you need to know how to tap into it and how to release it, right? Even Malachi says it. He says, see if I would not open. That's a promise. The prophet spoke that. Y'all love the prophets? <laughs> Everybody love the prophets except Malachi. Don't nobody like Malachi, right? But he said it. See if it was, thank you, Zakir. See if I see if I will not open. If God has to open a window, what does that mean? Is shut. That's just simple. See, he's first of all, he said, prove me now, right? And I'm not talking about tithing. I'm telling you about miracles. I'm telling you how to get the things that you need, how to manifest them from the realm of the spirit. To this physical realm that we're in because we live in this physical realm yes we love the lord and we speak in tongues and we got all these wonderful gifts but honey after you finish putting them down picking them up shouting running around the church speaking in tongues for 30 minutes you got to actually live this life of faith you got to get along with people you need stuff in this life okay so you need to know as a believer after all of your spiritual exercises and experiences and all that wonderful stuff you need to know how to release, how to tap in and get a release from heaven. And so that's what we're going to talk about today, right? The simplistic, thank you. The simplistic manifestations, King D. Ray. Thank you, sir. Worship leader. Simplicity, y'all, is simple. I'm telling you. And once you get this, it's going to change your life. It, it, will, it has changed my life. It has changed. I will never, ever, hear me when I say this. I will never minister or teach a word to you that I have not practiced in my own life. I will, I will never, I don't care if I hear a message or, and it sounds good, but if I have not practiced that word, I'll never preach it because I'm, I, I will, I will be a live, I will eat the roll first and I'll tell you, Hey, this is some good stuff or it's going to choke you. <laughs> you might feel like you're going to die, but it's going to be good for you. Right? I will always eat the bread first. That's why Jesus, come on, somebody had fellowship. He was ministering to me on the plane coming back yesterday and Jesus had fellowship and he was eating with them, right? I'm not going to give you something to eat that I haven't taken. And that's what many of the shepherds are doing. They're giving you food that they have not eaten. And they're telling you things to do and that they have not done. Like, I don't see food or none of that in your life, pastor, bishop, apostle, right? And they're expecting you to do it. And it's hard to explain a process to someone, and I'm speaking as an educator, it's hard to explain a process to someone when you have not walked out that process. Mm. So I will never tell you anything that I have not personally experienced, and I found it to be so. It is the truth. That woman said, come here. Let me tell you about a man that'll tell you everything. You got to have their own per ministers, leaders. You got to have their own personal thing first. You got to regurgitate. My daughter, Deaconess Jaleesa, she caught an impartation of a word, chew the cud. And she always said, chew, like, that thing is just, boy, it's just all, and I can feel what she, uh, <laughs> she gets all into it. But she, she caught it. You got to chew the cud. And what does chew the cud mean? Chew the cud means you eat it. You know, this is going to sound gross, but it's gospel. You chew it, you regurgitate it, you chew it some more, you regurgitate it, you chew it. That's what chew the cud means. You don't eat that meal one time. You continue to eat it until you extract every possible nutrient that that thing has to offer you. That's why when you hear a word, you hear it, you're taking notes, and then you go back and you study it. That's what chew the cud means. You can't apply anything. I learned that in training this week. The reason why we're not practicing anything is because we haven't applied it. And the reason why we haven't applied it is because you haven't practiced it. Does that make sense? You got to practice the word, okay? 
Praise God. Apostle Natalie, my friend. Praise God. So John chapter two, verse one, I'm talking about the simplistic manifestation of miracles. Apostle Natalie, she's big. She knows how to tap into this glory. She knows how to pull tap on that sound. I'm telling you, there's realms in the spirit, y'all, we can tap into that. It, listen, here's what Jesus said. Jesus said, I come that you may have life. Why did Jesus bring us life? Because we didn't. We were barbarians. We were a people that was not a people. We were the we were the ites. We were the folk that God fought. <laughs> okay, let's just let, you know, with our highly blessed and anointed self, we were the people that God fought. Hey, Shayla, we were the people God disliked. Okay, we were not the original people. We are wild. We were the wild branches grafted. We were not the olives. Okay, in other words, we were not the chosen anointed stock of Israel. Right, we were the wild branches grafted in by the grace of God through Jesus Christ. That's why we give Him glory. Jesus opened the door and let us in, y'all. He let us in. I'm telling you, we thank God for Jesus. But you got to understand, y'all. Jesus said, I come that you may have life. Somebody put that in the scripture in the comment and that you have it what more abundantly. So if Jesus said this and He said, I am the truth, and I don't see that abundant life in my life, but Jesus is truth. Something is wrong and it's not wrong with Jesus. Something is wrong with my understanding of the word. I don't know how to apply these principles. He said, I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Does that mean that you're not going to have affliction? Yes, you're going to have affliction. Jesus said, you're going to go through persecution in this world. You will have trouble, dear children. He said, but be of good cheer for guess what? I have overcome the world. And so whatever Jesus has overcome because Jesus now is in you, that means you have the power to overcome it too, but you got to apply it. OK, so listen, there are miracles that are the heaven right now is pregnant, bursting at the seams. Right. Because there are people of God on the earth that God has these spiritual blessings. Somebody put that in the comment. I'm giving I'm, I'm making y'all work. Put these scriptures in the comments because it's just in me. But I want y'all to research it. That you got to tap into release. Some of you are working too hard. Thank God that you're working. Let me just applaud you. But some of you are working too hard. In the Old Testament, the Lord was very specific about the garments he wanted the priests to wear. He didn't want you all, us, to wear blended clothes. He didn't want wool to be a part of the equation. Now, today we have blended synthetic fibers. I'm not talking about today's. I'm talking about in the spiritual sense, praise God. And sometimes you have to make that plain for people. So does that mean we can't wear wool? Honey, rock your wool. Wear your Kango hat. Go just be great. But I'm in the realm of the spirit. God was very specific about what he wanted his priests uh, to wear in service. He did not want you to sweat. And what I'm saying that is, Jesus said, cast your cares upon me because I care for you. In other words, the work that we do for the Lord, yeah, it should be laborious work, even challenging work that caused you to grow and mature. Somebody said, I matured through pain and so forth. But it shouldn't be to the point where you're just totally exhausted and worn out and I just can't make it and I give up. Something is wrong. Okay. Something is totally wrong. You, 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 you are, you are, the Bible says the way of a transgressor is hard. And if your way is hard, then you have transgressed the word. There's something in the word that you're not working. You're not doing it right. Honey, there's something wrong. Okay. Again, I'm not saying that you sh that you never have problems. I just told y'all I had to get a call in the middle of the night, run and, and rescue my daughter. You're going to have things. The enemy, the devil's going to try it. He's walking about signaling. That's his job, right? But our job as believers is to trust the God of the covenant. We have established covenant with him. When you came into that place of point of salvation, you came into covenant. God, you come into my life. You be my God, I be your child. What you want me to do, God? Where you go, like Naomi said, where you go, I go, Ruth, whatever. Come on, we had covenant, right? So God has already made provisions for you. God is not trying to figure out what to do. It's already done. Come on. This stuff is already, God is already in tomorrow, next year. That's why he can come and tell you, hey, don't sleep too um, hard tonight because you're going to get a phone call or, you know, you, you, you'll feel in your spirit like something is off. I feel my spirit feel vexed. I don't understand. And your inner man is already preparing you and releasing the strength you need to endure this trial without fainting, praise God. So you have to be sensitive to that, people of God. That's why you got to stand in the door. You can't be in the back room laying down. You got to get up, praise God. So there are miracles and provisions that God has made. And we, as a believing people, we've got to learn how to tap into it so we don't work ourselves to death trying to make a nickel, what's that song, trying to make a dollar out of 15 cents. 
you you're doing it too you're working yourself too hard and listen because i'm hearing god some of you are working your way into premature death now let me just make it real I, 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 let me make it plain and make it real some of you are working your way into premature death because you are making listen when god built you he sustained your frame to only carry a certain capacity you ever purchase something and it'll say weight capacity or like in these elevators we were in, it'll tell you, because I always check the elevators, praise God, I have a little fear of heights. And I'm always looking at the capacity and I'm looking at the people around me like, is this too many people in this elevator? Uh, I'll catch the next one, right? Because I understand, listen, there's a principle. Listen, I respect the principle of that elevator commissioner that said this has a 3,000 weight capacity or 300 or whatever. I, you got to respect capacity, people of God. And so when God built you, he built you with a capacity. It is embedded in, it's in you, it's in you. And there are things that God has uh, 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 will allow you to go through, right? And you grace. That's why some folk will look at you and say, I don't know how, if I couldn't, I couldn't have gone through that. There's no way I would have lost my mind. And it's true. It's true because God didn't build them to sustain what he built you to sustain, right? He knows the end from the beginning. And so in the beginning, you, you all talked about your worship house built upon pain, rejection, abuse, addiction, uh, orphanhood, and all this stuff. Guess what? I couldn't, honey, <laughs> I could not build that your house. I wasn't built for that. And that's why you can't look down on somebody because honey, I can't go, I can't walk through your stuff. I'm trying to walk through mine, right? And so, so you have to understand that even though there was some terrible, ugly, hateful, cruel, mean things done to you, even in that, God still, because he knows the end from your beginning, he's the author and finisher of your faith. And he knew the family you were going to be born into. He knew the temptation. That's why he gave us a way for escape. Thank God Jesus is the way he's the door to get out of that crazy, right? He gave us a way of escape, praise God. And so, but here you got to understand that uh, we all are built with the capacity to endure. Can I just say this? Even in leadership, there's some, oh, I wanted to be an apostle, baby. <laughs> I ran from my apostleship for six years, probably more than that. I just started counting at six, ran from it. Didn't even accept it until my apostle rebuked me openly in a church out of town. Like how embarrassing is that, right? And I accepted it. I didn't want it. I did not want it. I had been a prophet all my life. I'm a child. I'm seeing visions and hearing God. I can do the prophet. That, that's second nature, first nature almost. But that apostleship, I didn't want it because I saw the suffering I don't know what folk now here think about apostles today. Like, I don't know what y'all, <laughs> you're like, do y'all read the Bible? Like the stuff, you, did you see what happened to Apostle Paul and Peter and all of them, gee, all of them were apostles. Did you see what happened to them? Like, it doesn't get easier, people. And so I don't, I, I just, I was like, no, nah, I'm good. I'll just be a prophet. Call me prophet, it's prophet. I'm good. And let me just hide here. And God was like, no, <laughs> come here now, right? And, 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 and so there is the grace. That's why I'm forever going through warfare. And guess what? If the enemy's not fighting me, he's coming for my children, right? That, that is, it's, it's just, that's, that's the mantle. That's the warfare of the mantle. So there is a grace that comes with, with, with whatever God has released to you. There's a grace to sustain you, whether you're a prophet, whether you are a pastor, whether you're a teacher, whether you're evangelist, there's a grace for all those offices. If you are deacons, if you are ushers, if you're worship leaders, enemy attack, look what happened to David as a worship leader. People don't talk about that. The devil hates music because that was his gift. So he, listen, he tried, you see what happened to my, he tried to take Darius out several times. I mean, come on, somebody. The musicians, cars turning over and stuff. Y'all, stop and think about what, listen, stop and think about who you are and then begin to examine why you have some of the battles that you do. And you'll see that they're married. Some of the battles that you have are fruit of the marriage, not your spouse or your soon-to-be spouse, but fruit of the marriage to the work, okay? Now, back to simplistic manifestations of miracles. I'm like, I didn't want it. I ran from it. God was like, come here, come, come here. Um, so there was a need, all right? In John chapter two, there was a need. And, and somebody already put this in the comment. And so you can, you can reflect on it at a later date. But there was a need, right? This was Jesus's first miracle. I think the Bible, not I think, I know the Bible or the Lord was intentional about showing this to us as Jesus's first recorded miracle. Let me say that because I'm sure he did many more, but this is his first recorded miracle in Cana, 
I used to call it Cana. It's actually pronounced Cana. And I still may go back to Cana because it's a habit, praise God. But it's actually pronounced Cana of Galilee. This is Jesus's first biblically recorded miracle. What's happening, right? Okay, it's a wedding. Jesus was called and his disciples to the man. He was invited. Remember I talked about that? Being invited, can you entertain his presence? He was invited to this wedding feast and his disciples. They ran out of wine. I'm just kind of summarizing it because I did a whole lot of talking. Ran out of wine. And Jesus said, woman, have what? His mother came to him and said, Jesus, I'm just summarizing, right? We don't. We ran out of wine. He was like, you know, why is that my problem, right? I'm a guest. I mean, think about it. When you throw a party or you at a party and you tell somebody, hey, we got Kool-Aid, like, I'm going to grab something now. I mean, that's not my problem, right? But Jesus, he's saying to her, woman, why are you bringing this to me, to my attention? It's not my time, right? It's not time for me to do this because once I start performing miracles and showing people who I am, I'm going to attract some attention to me and I'm not ready for that yet, right? I'm, I, I don't, I'm, I'm working a plan and that's not a part of the plan. So in that, if I can stop for a moment and just talk to you for a little bit is you have to be very careful that you're not allowing people to pull things out of you before it's time, just because it's in there. Oh, man of God, I see you're going to be awesome. Woman of God, I see. And yeah, thank you. Thank you. You have truly seen that is in me. I've got that gift in me. I got that grace. I got that anointing, but it's not time for that. You got to understand, Ecclesiastes talked about it. There's a time and a purpose for everything under the sun. There's a time for everything. And listen, it, it's not up to the other person to know your time. They just know what's in you. It's your job to know your timing. You got to know your timing, okay? And so someone may identify something that God has truly placed in you and say, I see that. I see God doing this. I see you going. I see you whatever. Thank you. Praise God for that. Thank you. But that doesn't mean I need to do that today. OK, and I, I want to I, I just I, I purposely pause there because I want you to get that because I have found people hear a word. Right. And they immediately run. Oh, the man of God told me it's time to go to the nations. And now you've got a passport, a website and a business card and you don't have no more look of anointing for the devils that are in there. Like the devils I met in Las Vegas. Praise God, Jesus. Right. You see what I'm saying? You're not ready for what's in that place. You were put on notice that something is happening. Something has been planted in you. You have been put on notice that God is doing something, but you have not received the release to go yet. Wait for the release. The Lord, and when the apostles were meeting and the prophets, then the Holy Spirit says, separate Paul and Barnabas, right? Paul knew who he was. Jesus knocked him down and told him what he was going to do. That wasn't new news, but he waited. The Holy Ghost said, separate. Now it's time for them to go. And it wasn't some secret. <laughs> Praise God. People nowadays have these secret uh, ordinations and you don't all... <laughs> You just show up, oh, I'm apostle. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And you just, it's like, uh, you just like, you kind of forced to deal with it. Like nobody knew. You just showed up and like, woo, there he go. Wow, there she go. And you don't know. Nobody planned. Nobody knew about it. You just, you just took off being wonderful and great. So, but what happens was, so Jesus, Mary is setting, and I'm still talking about simplistic manifestation of miracles, but I, this is so pregnant. I gotta, I can't not share this with y'all. Jesus is saying to her, woman, my time is not yet. Now, if Jesus can acknowledge that his time is not yet, there's nothing wrong with you telling folk, thank you for that word. God bless you. I appreciate you being obedient and letting God use you like that. Man, you just, whoo, that word bless me. I'm just going to wait for God to release me for the time. All right. I'm going to wait. I'm just, I, I'm going to wait on God to, to give me a little bit more information or I'm going to, I mean, it's nothing wrong with that. I'm not knocking what you're saying, but you know, I thank you for that, but I'm going to wait for my time. And a true prophet will say, Hey, you better right not well i know god said i heard uh, 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 uh. you don't get to force that you don't get to you don't get to enforce somebody else's time you're just a mailman you don't tell them when to pay the bill you just tell them hey you might want to open up that like i need to open up <laughs> i read, read my bills all week right you might want to open up that bill i'm just saying but i can't enforce you and tell you when to pay the bill that's not my role my role is just to give you the message you got to work that message right and so jesus understood that um thank you woman for recognizing in me that I have the power to turn water into wine. Thank you, mama. I appreciate that, apostle, bishop, leader. Thank you. But 
it's not my time yet. And it's okay. One of my spiritual daughters, I won't call her out, but she released something to me last week. And she was like, mom, the Lord has put this thing on my heart, but I'm going to pull back for a minute because I'm dealing with some things. I have nothing but respect. I said, daughter, take your time. Let me know when you're ready. Why? Because I understand that you understand that even though there's something God has identified in you to do, wonderful. Thank God you can hear God. Thank you, God, that you're going to partner with him to get this great work done. But I also bless God that you are sensitive enough to know I'm not in that space right now, right? I'm not there yet. I know it's ahead of me. It's, 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 it's a joy set before me. I've got a goal to attain unto, and I'm going to get there by the grace of God. But I know right now I'm no good for that. And I had, I said, daughter, let me know when you're ready. I got you. No worries, right? Because as a prophet, I understand. I will never push you, amen, into something. You better do it right now. God said, if you don't do it, you're going to die. You'll never find that in scripture. Mm -mm. What did Elijah do to Elisha? He said, hey, uh, follow me, right? <laughs> and then he left. Elijah left. He just said, hey, whoop, come on, let's go, boy. Let's go, let's go. He didn't do that. He gave, he, and, and <clears throat> Elisha, Elisha said to Elijah, let me go and say goodbye. What did Elijah say? Hey, what about to do with you? You know, what about to do with that? I ain't gonna do with that. I my job, listen to me, prophets. My job is to tell you what God said. Your it's your job to work on it and work it out. I, don't, I ain't got nothing to do with that. Okay. So you don't get to enforce what God is saying. And in terms of forcing somebody to do it right now, that's not your job. That's between them and God, all right? So Mary comes to Jesus and Mary says, still talk about miracles, because I want you to see how this thing is set up. So she goes to Jesus and she says, we need, we, we need some wine, we got a wine. And she recognizes there's something in him, right? He has the ability, he has the capacity. Some of you may say, why do people always come to me for these kind of problems? because you have the capacity to solve the problem, right? Because you're just awesome like that. You give great counsel. You give great advice. You make people laugh. You make people feel good. You make people feel all warm and bubbly on the inside. And so that's why this is what's happening to you. This is why certain kinds of people are attracted to you because they see that capacity. And you may be saying, I'm just trying to find out if Jesus loved me. But the gift is, it, listen, it is, it, is, it is growing, it's maturing, it's developing developing and it's like hey you know whenever you're ready <laughs> you know what i'm saying like the apostleship everybody apostle, I'm, i don't want it and but the gift is ready the listen the, the harvest is plentiful but the laborer was asleep <laughs> or scary or somewhere hiding under baggage but the harvest was ready the people was ready the work was ready the assignment was ready but the folks was hiding praise god so she goes to him and she says, you know, we need why he said my hour's not come. Listen to what happened, y'all. Now we're getting into the meat of this message, right? I'm sorry it took a long time, but I'm not sorry about it. Simplistic manifestation of miracles. Here's what Mary did. And when you get this, it's going to change your life and you are welcome. She says, after she heard what Jesus said, she no longer pursued or carried on the conversation with Jesus. She turned around to the people who were in charge of the water, the wine, the wine, or what have you at that point. And she says to them, whatever he says, do it. This was faith on fire. This is how you tap into simplistic. Hear me when I say this. Simplistic manifestation of miracles. This was faith on fire. Jesus said, he didn't say no. He just didn't say yeah. <laughs> So it was like she was kind of in the hallway and some of you are like that. Some of us are like that. You know, God is going to do something because you brought him a need and it's unlike him to not respond. You just don't know what in the world he's going to do or how he's going to do it. So you're kind of in that hallway like, OK, all right, I already told you <laughs> I got a problem, Jesus. Like, I really need you right here and I don't see you moving like you just I don't feel you. Right. But guess what she did? She said, you know what? I already gave you the need. I already told you, I've already prayed about it. So I'm not going to keep going back to God. Lord, well, where you at, Jesus? Why the water didn't turn to wine? What's going on? We hungry. That's, see, that's where you get, that's where you start provoking God and get on his nerves. Okay, don't do that. Here's what you do. You do what she did. She turned around and she spoke to, listen, the authority, hear me, those in charge of the wine. In other words, she spoke to the authority, whatever the, she spoke to the situation. Let me just say that, make that plain. She spoke, thank you, Joy, faith on fire. She spoke to the situation. Y'all, miracles, I'm telling you, you're gonna, you're, gonna, you're gonna experience so many miracles back 
to back. A lot of things that you all been struggling and fighting with, once you get this, you're going to see a lot of breaking. You're going to see a lot. Of, it's like atmosphere breaking. It's probably why y'all been getting so much rain. I said, y'all, because we ain't had no rain. We had sun, 102 degrees worth of sun all week. And it's been rain here, praise God. But you're going to see why. There's been atmosphere changes and that stuff because praise God is saying, I, I listen, I need you to tap because heaven is pregnant. Heaven is pregnant and heaven wants to give birth. Heaven wants to release some things to you, right? He wants to, uh, God wants to release some things to you, some things that you need. And you've been, some of you've been getting frustrated. Some of you have been growing weary. And the Lord said, don't be weary and well doing for you shall what? Reap if you faint not. And some of you, you, you're borderline in your fainting season. Yes, you are. You are, you are, you are. You are in a borderline fainting season where you're saying, God, if you don't do this right here, I'm going to lose. I'm going to go off. I'm going to flip and act a whole fool. And, and God said, I don't want you to do that. I don't, listen, he's trying to preserve your integrity and maintain your testimony. And so God is saying, okay, so right now I need you to get this daughter, son. I need you to sit still and I need you to listen. I need you to look at what Mary did. Mary did not haggle Jesus. Mary did not finagle. She didn't, she didn't aggravate him. She said, I've already faith on fire. Y'all I've already given him my need. I have already stated my request. It's okay. If that's where you are, that's where you are. Own that. Lord, I'm in a fainting season. I've had many fainting seasons. Jesus, and it's okay. Own it. And then at least you can acknowledge it. You can't, listen, you can't overcome anything that you don't acknowledge. That's like going to the doctor. What's wrong? I don't know. But what you want me to do? I don't know. You have to know, right? You got to be able to confess it. Then the healing and all that stuff comes. So you, you got to own this stuff first. Own you crazy. I always say that. And so she she no longer kept going to God. Lord, I told you I done prayed 20 years. I'm praying. No, see, that's not how that works. That's not, that's why it's not working for you. I've been praying, I've been praying. So God is not deaf, right? Let's just say that. <laughs> God is not deaf. What did he say? What did the prophet Isaiah say? He said, My ear, he said, My ear is not dull, then I that I cannot hear, neither my arms short, that I cannot say. So God has clarified in his word, there's nothing wrong with his hearing. If he can hear Abel's ground, blood crying from the ground, I'm pretty sure he can hear your prayer. I'm, I'm, I'm 100% certain he heard your prayer. If he can hear a report coming out from Sodom and Gomorrah that there's hell going on around here, <laughs> it's hell, hell, and more hell, right? And he's, it was, listen, that report came up so strong. He said, I'm coming down. Come on, somebody. He said, I'm coming down to see if it be so. So you got to take that prayer to God. That's your first step. Lord, I know you know. No, you have to actually pray it. Remember what I said? Voice activation. Voice, you have to say it. Lord, I am dealing with this. Lord, I need this. I'm out of wine, right? I don't mean literal wine. I'm just saying whatever your wine thing is. I'm out of joy. I'm out of peace. I'm out of relationships. I'm out of whatever your running low tank reservoir thing looks like, Lord, I'm running low. I'm running out. God, I'm on E. I'm in dust. God, I'm on fumes. Some of y'all operating on fumes, right? You got to take that. That's the first step to releasing these miracles is you got to have a conversation. How are you going to have a conversation? You need a prayer altar. You need a worship house. You see how I'm building this? You need a prayer altar. You need a worship house. So God wants to talk to you. There's some folk, y'all having, some of you all are having one way conversation, like you're doing all the talking and God's not responding because he's not there, right? And somehow we have, we have created this illusion. I pray, I know God heard me. I know. Well, if you, if he heard you, where is he? You ever talked on the phone to people and then you're like, hello? <laughs> like there's convers that's what that conversation with verse, conversation full of with verses. That's what that word means, right? If you're a wordsmith, you know, it, conversation with verse full of with verses. So that means that means it's two verses. Like it goes both ways. It's not just you praying. God's talking too, or God's talking and you're responding. So if you say, "Lord, I pray," I don't know where you at. He, you, you don't. Because <laughs> he probably wasn't there. It was a one-way conversation, and you may have had some barriers in place. You got some unforgiveness. You got some disobedience. I mean, you pick one. Praise God. So that's why you got to build that worship house, build that prayer, so you can get all that stuff out of the way. We ain't got time. Build a prayer house. Abraham did not have time to say, hey, baby, do we have any lamb? 
did you go get flour? You got to have your stuff on hand, people. You got to have that. This have your deck, have your have your deck full, have your stuff full. Have it ready, praise God. Oh, you ain't got time to go get, have it ready. Have everything. I got my worship. I got my word. I got my life together. I'm, oh, I'm working on it, praise God. Praise the Lord. You got time to get your stuff together? Don't wait till a problem come to pray. Now you got a problem because you're so frustrated. You can't even pray, right? Because you're praying through crisis. You're praying through problems. You're not praying through faith. Praise God. So I pray y'all all right. Everybody all right? Everybody all right? So, so she she ceased from talking to Jesus because I believe by faith, you heard me because you got ears and you can hear real good. You can hear stuff out the ground. You can hear waters. You can hear God. Ain't nothing wrong with your hearing. So there's no need for me to keep repeating myself over and over. I don't need to do that. I'm mature enough in my faith to know that when I tell you one time, you got it. You are a pretty smart guy. I'm pretty sure you heard me and you understand what I'm saying. So there's no need for me to keep coming. Here I come again, God. I'm going to pray about it again. Why are you doing that? What? <laughs> Stop doing that, praise God. And so turn from harassing God okay, because that's not a prayer of faith, and start dealing with your circumstances. Mary turned and spoke. Here's what she said. Let me pull my scripture. She said, the mother, his mother, verse five, turned to the servants and said, whatever he says to you, do it. You know what she did, y'all? She tapped into heaven. She said, you know what? I've already spoken it. Now I'm going to, I'm going to release my faith. I'm going to, that's why I said faith and fire. I guess that's a subtop, faith and fire. And she spoke to her circumstances. Do you know what she told her? She gave her circumstances ears. Y'all, you got to give your circumstances. She gave her circumstances ears. She said, whatever he tells you, that's what you do, right? She spoke. So you're having issues in your relationships and you're taking it to God. Lord, I need you to work out this relationship between me and so-and-so or between so-and-so and so-and-so and, -so and, -so and all that. And then, and, 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 and you, you're not waiting for somebody to call you as soon as you say, amen, girl, the relationship worked out. That may not happen, right? Because it takes times for humans to respond. And so that's okay. While they're processing what's happening in the realm of the spirit, that's okay. Then you speak. And I speak to the relationship between Mary and John that you want to be healed. You, you speak to the situation. You give it ears. Give it ears, y'all, okay? So this is what she did. She spoke to them and she said, whatever he says to you, do it. And listen, and there were the six water pots nearby, right? Because you gotta, God gotta have something to work with. See how, that's, see how I set that up? He's gotta have something to work with. Now, why are you gonna ask me to turn water into wine and I don't have nothing to put the wine in? Uh-oh, you see what I'm saying? We're asking God for things, but you have not created a space for the thing to manifest. Boy, that's a whole word right there. Did y'all hear God? Did y'all? That just shook my core. You're asking God for something, but where is he going to do it at? What's he going to do it with? What is he working with? When the widow went to the prophet Elisha and say, I'm in debt. My son's about to be uh, um, taken into custody to, to work off this um, debt uh, that my husband owed, what have you. He said, go borrow vessels and other vessels vessels y'all things capacity containers you got to have a place for the blessing to land a place for the miracle it's got to have a place it's not gonna say poof here it is <laughs> you got to have a place you got to make space right you got to look you got to have a space for that thing to manifest where is it going to manifest at i got six water pots i've got space in my life i got space in my heart i made room in my house i made space in my mind I made space in my heart. I made space in my day. Where's the space? Where are you? Where is this thing supposed to manifest? Where is it supposed to happen? Where? You gotta, it's gotta be, you have to make room for it. You have to make room for these miracles that God is about to, to, to manifest. That's why he said, I will pour out a blessing that you should what? Not have room to receive. And then the Bible says, give no space or no room to the enemy. Gotta make some space, y'all. You got to make some space. That means some of us got to clear out some junk. That was a message to my church this morning. Let's get this junk out of here, right? Before we end up by in violation. Clear out the stuff. Mental, mind matters. Heart matters. You want God to move. Lord, I need you to grow me, develop me. God, use me. And God was like, I, I'm trying to. I, I don't have where. <laughs> like, it's you all. Uh, Hezekiah Walker said, you know, um, I'm all sold out. Um, I forget the lyrics of the song, praise God. But he, he in the song, he was saying, I'm, um, 
I can't even remember the lyrics. But anyway, in that song, All Sold Out, S-O-L-E-D. I love the way he did that wordplay there. But he was talking about, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm vacant to you, God. I'm available to you, right? You have to make space for that thing that you believe in God for. You can't have all your junk, all your bitterness, all your anger, all your rage, all your everything in the way. And you're like, God, I need you to move. God's like, where? You want me to move in? Have you ever? Let me just put this natural out here for you. Have you ever moved into a, a place, rented a space, or bought a house, and it, it, people already left their stuff in it? What do you do? You start cleaning stuff out. You don't want to move your stuff in on somebody else's stuff. You want to move into a house that's freshly painted. Am I talking to the church? Hello? Somebody holler at me. Pass all in the comments. Can y'all follow past and talk to me? She, You, you want to move into a house that's got fresh paint, fresh carpet, or clean carpet. So if you want that in the natural, in the natural, why you can't give God that in the realm of the spirit? Why God have to move in on top of your junk? <laughs> why does he have to move in and say, can you move this table? Can you move the chair? Can you put the trash on the floor? Can you... Why does God have to do that? Why can't we just create this space? And I know y'all probably listen like, I only want to respond. I'm just trying to receive. And I feel y'all and stay right there if that's where you're at. But I'm just saying, why do we expect God to come in and re... where the miracles going to come at? Where are you going to put that? If you believe in God for a spouse, where is she or he going to fit into your life? Have you made space? Are you still, <laughs> is me and my way or the highway? Well, don't ask God for a spouse. It's, it's me and my four and no more. Well, then don't ask God for a dog. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You have not made space. If you still have a mentality that it's all about you and it's me, and then don't ask God for a relationship. I'm just saying that. If, if you still have that selfish mindset as me, myself, I, this is what I want, this is what I'm going to do, then that's wonderful. There's nothing wrong with being who you are. But if you're asking God for relationships, and I want you to look at, are you making space for that? Because listen, when the space was made, let me go back to this. I hope y'all, I know that I'm taking all your time. It's okay. Your chicken is going to be fine. Your roast beef, your everything, your salad, cob salad, my favorite. It's going to be good. I promise you. But we got to get this work because we got to change some of the stuff for you guys. You got it, it, You got to come out of the struggles. Now, come on now. There are seasons with cyclical seasons, right? Time to refrain from grace, more time of war, time of peace. You're going to have cyclical stuff. Some of us, your cycle, I'm just saying, you just, you know, you have an irregular cycle. Can I just say that? <laughs> you have an irregular cycle and, and we need to regulate that because God is all about balance and order. Everything God does day and night, water and dirt. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Is everything's balanced. So wherever you see imbalance in your life, then there, um, there is, there's an abandonment of, of God's policy, protocol, procedures, and, and, and principles. Something is off. I'm telling you, it's something that is off. Okay. So you, you may have an irregular cycle. This has been happening in my life too long, right? If you're using a restroom and you, you're releasing a whole lot of waste, it's called diarrhea. What do you do? Get some anti diarrhea Stop it, <laughs> right? Like I can't stand the bathroom all day long. And so anything irregular causes chaos and dysfunction and malfunction. And so when you have some of the same things happening over and over, like repetitively, it's not okay, people of God. And can I say that some of this stuff is not demons. Some of it is. Some of it's not demons. Some of it is our own habits and our personalities and our mannerisms. So you need to deal with that before you go finding dragons and you Leviathan and you dragging up stuff. Praise God. Leave them alone because you can beat all of them and still be a hot mess, right? You done slayed all the dragons in your family and you still stuck because that wasn't an issue as such. So you've got to have these containers, capacity, a place. What should make the place? Listen to what she said. There was, and I'm trying to wrap this up. Six water pots of stone after the manna purifying of the Jews containing two or three firkins. I think firkins is like 13 gallons. Last time I studied it, one firkin equals 13 gallons. I think, don't quote me on that, but I think that's what it means. Anyway, I'm just talking about, they were huge. Come on, somebody. Make space, make room. What do you believe in God for? How much room do you have for him to do that? How much room? How big is your vision? Well, I just want God to pay my bills off. Fine, praise God. I'm trying to own like acres and acres of property and build development centers and training camps. So yeah, I got to make a lot of room for that, right? It's a whole lot of planning that has to go into that. There's a lot of capacity, a lot of trainings that I'm going to need. And so guess what? I'm going to make that happen. I'm going to make that available. And so many of us are believing God for things, but you have not prepared a place. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, 
there you may be also. And he gave us a pattern. That was a pattern, right? The tabernacle was a pattern, a blueprint. And so if Jesus is saying, I'm going to prepare a place that where I am, the meeting, the connection, you may be also, Abraham prepared a place. You need to prepare a place that where my vision is, where my need is, there God can come and meet me there. I need to prepare a place for this miracle. I need this miracle in my family. First thing I need to do is make space for where I need this miracle to take place. Well, what's in the space right now? Chaos. What does the chaos look like? She don't like him. He don't like her. Okay, so I'm going to start speaking to the situation. And I want to start clearing some debris. The, 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 the debris that I can clear, I'll do that on my own. Okay. The stuff that I can't handle, I'll turn it over to God. But I'm going to deal with the issue. I'm going to deal with the, 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 the water pots. I'm going to deal with the vessels. I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to clear space for God to come in and bring healing between Mary and John, Mary and Julia, whoever. Praise God. There were six water pots, right? Jesus said, listen now. Do you see what I want you to follow this? Simplistic. It was simple. It was really simple. It was, but this all happened within three verses. Three verses, people waiting for wine. Mary told Jesus, we need wine. Jesus said, woman, it's not my time. Why are you telling me? Not my problem. She said, okay. She said, um, prepare the water and whatever Jesus say, do it. And she's gone. Because I'm not, you know, and <laughs> because my faith is so strong, I don't even have to be here when it happens. Now that's, that'll preach right there. That'll preach. My faith is so strong that I don't have to watch the paint dry. I don't have to watch the paint, the water boil. I believe that I'm going to move on to do something else. I often say, I'm not going to babysit my seed. I've sown my seed in faith. It knows what to do. Praise God, because seed multiplies after its kind. You know what to do. I'm not going to babysit you. When it's time for you to come out the ground, you know how to come out the ground. You know how to sprout. You know how to blossom. You know how to bud. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to babysit you. You know what to do. Within every seed, it has it, it, it is its own scientific process of maturity and development. I don't have to babysit that. Well, where the money go? Don't worry about where the money go. It's out of my hands. That's all that matters. It's, it's doing what it's supposed to do. And it will not return unto me void. It will accomplish the thing where into it has been sent. Is anybody hearing God, right? So when she spoke to Jesus and gave him the need, then she turned around and spoke to the circumstances and she went on about her business. Y'all, guess what? Her faith, number one, the, the prayer of faith, Right. When she took it to Jesus, here's my need. This is what I need. I heard what you said, but you heard what I said. Right. You heard me and I heard you. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. And now she's saying, hey, this is getting ready to happen. I'm going to speak about faith. Uh, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Have these water parts clean, fill them up with water or what have you, because we're about to have some wine. And I'm going to go out here and tell the people, get your glasses ready. She provoked heaven to perform a miracle, listen to me, y'all, that Jesus didn't even want to do. Some of you, listen, you got, by your faith, by you working this, you're going to provoke God into, and I'm not saying, when I, listen to me carefully, I'm not saying provoking God like God don't want to do things. I'm just saying there are some rusty hinges, and I released that word a few days ago. There are some blessings on rusty hinges, like it's kind of hard to open. It's never been done before. Circumstances got to be right and all that stuff. You, and you just got to be patient with it, right? But you still put that word on it and keep the expectation behind it. Keep your faith behind that word and just trust God. Whenever it opens, I'm okay. I just know it's opening and I'm good with it. She went out to the wedding party, did not come back in the kitchen and say, hey, where do I, where, where, she didn't, come on. She didn't, she didn't get in, she didn't interfere with that process. She trusted God. She put the word of the need out there. She spoke to the circumstances, gave it instruction. When God said, move, move. Mary and John, the Lord is about to speak to the both of y'all. Y'all going to stop this fighting and fussing. God's going to speak to y'all. And whatever he tell y'all to do, you're going to do it. And I'm going on about my business. I'm going to love y'all. God bless you. Love you. Send little hearts and hug emojis. And I'm going on. I'm not going to keep, I'm not, listen, you, first of all, you don't have time to keep going over some nonsense stuff. You ain't even got time for that. Those of us 40, 50 on up, you don't live, we don't live half our life. I mean, I don't have time. I just don't have, and if y'all young ones don't have time either, because this age is different. You don't have time for a lot of the nonsense stuff. The Bible said, redeem the time because the days are evil. Read a lot of the stuff that you pity backing and, and pat and all that pity, patting, whatever. You're wasting time. Stop praying the same prayers. And, 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 and somebody said, I can't quote it exactly, but doing the same thing, expecting a different result is called the definition of insanity. 
I don't know if that's true or not, but it makes good sense to me. If it's not working, it's not working. So find out what works and then work that. What did, what did Mary do? I need a miracle. We have never had water turn into wine before, but today is going to be that day, right? What is your miracle? What is the area in your life that you need water turn into wine? Whatever that is, whatever that is, God wants to turn your ordinary into extraordinary. And sometimes God moves slow. I'm just saying, sometimes God moves slow. Doesn't mean he's not going to do it. But sometimes the Lord was like, well, you know, I'm just going to see if you trust me like that. I'm just going to see Jesus waited. When Lazarus was dying, died, praise God, he waited. And he was crying right along with the rest of them. That thing tripped me out. He was weeping. And I'm like, why was you weeping? And you know you was going to raise him up. But he, he's like, hey, I'm feeling I'm hurt too. He knew all along he was going to resurrect him, but he allowed, listen, he allowed himself to feel the people's emotions so that he could be tempted at all points, right? Jesus allowed himself to feel those emotions. Then he said, okay, all right, let me go ahead and raise it, wake him up. And he said, Lazarus, come forth, because everybody would have came up out of there and it wouldn't be time, praise God. So there are times that God will delay a thing for his glory, right? For his glory. But that, don't, that doesn't mean that you get to lose your faith in the process. You have to believe God. I trust God. I prayed about the situation and I'm calling things that be not as, she said, I need water. I need wine. I'm calling those things that be not as though they are. I need wine. I need this. I need that. I need it. God, you know, this is a situation. I don't see it right now. That ain't even my problem. That's, that's your problem to make it happen. And I'm pulling it. It's your responsibility to release it. Okay. However you release it, whenever you release it, I'm, that's not even my problem anymore. Once I cast my cares on you, I'm done. I'm not going to babysit my prayer. I'm not going to watch. I'm, listen, I, I'm going to watch and pray, but I'm not going to watch my prayer to the point that I'm going to keep going back over it, over it. Like, no, I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to wait for this water to turn into wine by faith. I'm going to watch this circumstance turn in my favor. And when you get to that point of faith, people of God, you're going to experience miracles on top of miracles. Things will work out for you. I, I have so many personal testimonies that I, I can't even share. I can't even share because other people's lives are entangled. And sometimes you got to be careful. Sometimes your testimonies are entangled with somebody else. So you got you have to use wisdom with that, right? I can't believe she talked about my business. So you have to use wisdom, right? But there are personal testimonies. Again, I will never preach and teach anything to you that I have not firsthand experienced. But there have been situations and circumstances in my life where I needed God, period. Nobody could do it. It had never been done before. And I went to God just like Mary did. And I said, this is what I need. And I knew in the realm of the spirit, the timing was off. I knew the time it was off. He, he, listen, Jesus told her it ain't my time. He didn't even give me that memo. I'm, I said, God, this is what I need. And I know my time is bad. <laughs> I knew it. But it didn't, it, at that point, it was irrelevant. I still need it done right now. I need it done right now. And I began to create space. I began to speak to, my, to, to the water pots, to my situations. And I'm telling you, it was not many days hence. Phones started ringing, text messages, opportunities, people of God. It manifested. God turned water into wine. He took dull, ordinary things that had tremendous potential to be something beautiful. And wine brings joy. Wine is symbolic of the joy of the Lord, right? Water is refreshing and, and spiritual and wonderful, and that's good. There's some spiritual people that have no joy. You, you anointed and just as bitter as everything. You need water and wine. My God, you need two cups on the table. But I'm talking about a place, Ezekiel, it is good, sweetheart. It's so good that you can speak to y'all. Y'all got to speak to these water pots. Speak to your water pots. Many of you are praying and you're wonderful intercessors. I love God for some of y'all got some faithful, beautiful prayers. I've heard some of you. I can feel some of you. And listen, I can tell your prayer life by your conversation. How you doing? Oh, I'm good. God is good. I already know, man, she can chase a devil down the block. <laughs> you know, others, I, you know, I'm just, I'm like, oh boy, you ain't prayed in two years, have you? You can tell, I can tell your conversation when you pray. I can, because it's a vibe. I can tell, I can tell. You can discern. If you have to give a discern, you can discern just by conversation what a person's prayer life is. Because it's, 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 it's the air that you breathe. It's the air. Your prayer becomes a part of who you are. Your conversation. 
right? It rules your life. It governs your life. But there have been times, y'all, I'm telling you, I have needed God and I have never seen God do stuff like that before. And it didn't even phase me. Like, I don't even care. You know, we say, I, this is the God of the encore. There are going to be times where you want to ask a God to do something that th he hadn't encore. It's going to be a first time thing for you, right? It's going to be a pioneering, amen, new thing that God will do that nobody in your bloodline has seen. My God, who am I talking to? Nobody in nobody's bloodline, you know, it has happened. Folks will say to you, I ain't never seen God. I didn't even know God could do stuff. Like I have said it. I have said it. I, said, I didn't even know God could do stuff like this. Nobody has. It's the first wedding, y'all. Nobody has seen God, God like that. I mean, you see how I took that now and I made it a verb. Nobody has seen God, God like that. But that woman's faith was so strong. Jesus, a woman, it ain't my time. She's like, okay, <laughs> that's what you say. But my faith, I'm going to turn it, right? Like the river, come on, like the rivers of water. I'm going, my faith is going to turn. It's going to turn uh, this, this, this waiting season. It's going to turn it around. It's going to turn for my good, y'all. It's going to turn around for my good. And yeah, y'all may be okay with waiting 10, 30 years. I'm, I'm not okay with that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's what she was saying. You said it's not your time. Okay. Speak to the water pots. I'm going to put a demand on your time. You say it's not my time. I'm going to put a demand on it by my faith. And not only am I going to put a demand on it, I'm going to set things in order so that you don't have no choice but to speak this water. Because all you're going to do is be looking at water all day. It's going to stare at you. It's going to be like, you're going to speak to us or what you're going to do? She say, we supposed to be wine by now. We ain't wine yet. We still water. My circumstances, I will bring my circumstances before the Lord. And here, God, I don't see wine nowhere. I ask for wine. I'm believing you by faith. I'm calling those things that be not. Where's the wine, Lord? I don't see the wine. Lord, you said. Lord, I'm saying, right? People of God, the simplistic manifestation of miracles. Some of you are saying, woman well, of God, I'm believing God for a miracle in my health, in my body, okay? Take it to God in prayer. Lord, I'm believing you. I have a problem in my body, wherever it's at. I'm just saying, you gotta confess it. You gotta, you gotta state the problem. Sorry, please comment, state the problem. Well, Lord, you know, you've been watching me all my life. Let's be specific. Because when God talks to you, he's specific. So let's feed God that language, but let's feed him that vocabulary. Lord, I am dealing with this. I've been dealing with this area in my body for a year, two years, all right? I need healing in this part of my body. Then you speak to the part of your body. It, it, come on, y'all. Make it match. Marry it. Marry your prayer with your petition. Speak to God with the prayer and then speak. Thank you, Zakira. And then speak. I speak to this organ or I speak to this blood or I speak to whatever. And I command you that when God speaks, you line up and you get, get an order and obey God. Now, for some of us, us, some of it is self-inflicted. You know you're not supposed to have bacon every day, but you love bacon every day. So now then you speaking to God, but then you got to speak to, you got to discipline yourself, right? And you know, I cannot have bacon today. I'll just have toast, right? You got to make space. Because you're asking God to deal with blood pressure, but God, there's no space because you got bacon everywhere. <laughs> I'm just saying. You're asking God to heal in relationship. Lord, I'm asking you to heal Mary and John's relationship. I don't know any Marys and John's, whatever. If that's y'all, I'm just using words. Lord, heal Mary and John's relationship. Then you begin to speak to Mary and John in the realm of the spirit, right? You know what? I, I speak. There's going to confusion. It's going to stop between two of y'all. This bickering and arguing. Come on, pray, y'all. And then lay that decree as a king. Speak that word. I come against this arguing, this contention spirit. And I decree in Jesus' name, there's going to be peace between y'all. And guess what? I'm going to leave it alone. They may argue like cats and dogs for a whole week after you pray that. Now, do you go back? Lord, I don't see the prayer. No, you got to wait. You got to give it space, right? You got to give it time. Praise God. And you have to believe by faith. Some things are not going to happen overnight because you're dealing with humans. But when you release that word to prayer and prayer, and then you spoke to the circumstances, then you wait and move on and go find something else to, 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 to deal with. We're looking at Mary and John. That's going to work out. By faith, it's going to work out. Whoever your Marys and Johns are. If it's finances, Lord, I come to you in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Uh, 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 there's been poverty spirits all up and down my bloodline on both sides. Mom and daddy was broke. The devil is alive. 
I, they ain't trying to be my testimony. I'm not trying to do that. I'm not trying to be broke. I'm not trying to raise my kids to be broke. I'm breaking that stuff off in Jesus' name. Now, what do I do? I'm going to speak to the water pots. What is your water pot? Your job, your bank account, your credit cards, whatever is a part of that financial thing process. Start speaking. Do you need to clean up, make some room? You have too much stuff? Because maybe you have the money and you're a poor manager. You're a poor steward. And so with that, God is okay. So here's what I'm going to do, give you wisdom. It may not even be more money. I'll give you wisdom with what you got and show you, get rid of that, sell that, kill that, do that, right? And you got extra $5,000 left at the end of the month. Imagine that. Sometimes it's wisdom. What I'm saying is people, you don't know what your water to wine thing looks like. And I'm coming to a close, but and you can use this, you can use this in any area of your life. It works. It works. But you got to, it's, it's always, and I will say this until God take my breath, it's always kingdom principles. It's line upon line, here a little, there a little. It's always stacked up. There's this, that, this, that's just the way it works. When you look in the beginning, I wrote that book, Let There Be Light. God spoke and look at the order. First he spoke, he looked at the chaos. Then he spoke, water separate, firmament build. It's a process. It's, it doesn't change, people of God. It doesn't change. You just have to apply it differently. Okay, so that's the word for this week. That's the word for the rest of this year is the simplistic manifestation of miracles. It's not going to take long for things in your body to line up. Like Apostle Natalie teaches about tapping into that sound of frequency of heaven. Sometimes God just want to get you quiet so he can release and just release a peace. Some of us, can I tell you, some of us have chaos in our minds and in all of our nervous systems because you don't know how to be quiet. You know? You need to tap into the sound of heaven and just get quiet Tap and let angels minister. What did Jesus do? After he ministered, he got quiet and angels ministered. Some of us talk too much, Jesus. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You talk too much. Then that was a song back in the day. The man said, he, he said, you never shut up. I don't even remember who the rapper was. He said, homeboy, you talk too much. You never shut up, right? Some of us need to just kind of look at the lyrics. I'm not telling you to rap it, but just look, because guess what? All things were created good, right? Even some of this music was created good. The enemy perverted it, but some of these folks got a revelation behind some stuff now. I'm going to tell you right now. That man said, you talk too much. You never shut up. <laughs> you never shut up. People trying to give you wisdom. You call somebody for counsel and you out talk the counselor. And then you get off the phone. I, I, man, I'm more confused now because you wouldn't stop talking. <laughs> you will be quiet. Learn how to listen, still your spirit. Jesus spoke to Elijah in the still small. How can you hear God in the still small voice if you got all this stuff? You got so much noise. You got white noise, yellow noise, black noise. You got people talking in your head. You have to, you're gonna have to get rid of all them people, okay? Kick them folks out, okay? And, and, and learn how to get quiet. Be quiet. The man in Psalms 1 was blessed. He was quiet. He was in the congregation of the unrighteous, the ungodly. He didn't have all this stuff. Some of us, <laughs> you, I'm just, man, can I just say it? Because I'm going to say it. Some of you got the wrong, run DMC. Thank you, Pastor. See, thank God for real people that still remember stuff from the 70s and the 80s. Come on, y'all. We still say, but we ain't, listen, nothing wrong with my memory. So I'm talking about just getting into that place where we can see some of these miracles manifest. But some of us have wrong, y'all got, some of the wrong people in your ear and they're, they're, they're stopping up the line. They're clogging up the line. There was that commercial on Verizon said, can you hear me now? You can't hear. You cannot hear because you got the wrong congregation of people. And some of these folks are demonically planted in your life for the sole purpose of distorting your reception, your perception. They are sound distorters. They, you can't hear God for nothing. They on your phone in the morning, noon, the afternoon. Right? I mean, just yak, 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 talking about nothing. And then you trying to get a prayer. Hey, first of all, you don't gossip all day long. So you, how are you going to give God a prayer request out all of that trash? How does that even work? All right? Praise the Lord. So I'm done. This has been the word of the Lord. I have had a phenomenal time sharing with you all. I do ask you all to be in prayer. I am also quarantined because I've been exposed to COVID. Praise God. But again, guess what? That will not stop the work of the Lord. We will do this. If we have to sit behind a computer, we're going to get this work done. Amen. Also tending to my daughter, um, praise God, who is recovering um, from a car accident. But listen, afflictions are going to come, right? You can't stop 
every time something goes wrong. Otherwise, you will never get anything done because <laughs> we live in a fallen world. We live with around fallen people. Things are going to, I'm telling you, the devil is going to, and I ministered this Wednesday night. You're going to either have your flesh that you're battling with, demons or humans, demons using humans. You're going to always have that, you know? So you got to find, find a way and you have to be intentional about being obedient. And that, that's my last point. That's my last point is you have to be obedient. You have to do what God say do. And some of what God says is not going to make you feel good. I'm telling you, as I was on a plane flying and yesterday, the Lord is downloading more stuff. And I, I lied to you not because I would never lie to you all. I told the Lord, I said, I'm not even going to write this stuff down. <laughs> I'm just saying, I was like, Lord, just put it in my spirit. Just put it in my spirit. Uh, you know, because I'm like, here we, you know, and, and again, don't get me wrong. I love it. I, I love it because it it, it 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 gives you a drive and a momentum and it keeps you, Lord knows it keeps you going and it keeps you young because you look like you don't age because I'm always going, praise God. And, and so I guess in that is just rejuvenation. But I also say that I, I was telling, I said, God, I'm not even going to write it down because I said, just put it in my spirit, right? Just, just put it in my spirit and just know it's going to be done. And it was, it was, it was a, it was a consent. It was a consensual how do I want to put this? Um, I just consented. That's it. I'm like, I, you know, just put it in my spirit. Like, I'm not even going to write this down because this is what you want and just put it in my spirit and I'll get it done. Right. And it's going to get done. I don't know how it's going to get done, but it's going to get done because this is what God wants. And when God gets what he wants, you get what you want. When a man's ways are pleasing unto the Lord, he will make even his enemies his footstool. And when you say enemy, you may mean the people that don't like you. But when I say enemy, I'm talking about death. I'm talking about poverty. I'm talking about hardship. I'm talking about chaos and family. That's what I look at as an enemy. Some of you have a have a very poor perception or a poor um, revelation of enemies. Oh, my haters, my haters. And you automatically think of people. Sometimes your haters is a system, okay? It's not just people that don't like you. That's the very lowest level of haterade, if I can say that, is the people on your job or the people in your house or the people in your church or the people wherever your people is people in that. But when I think about enemies, when the Lord will make my enemies my footstool, yeah, there's a couple of folk, you know, that probably could fit in that category. Not that I'm putting them there, but their ways put them there, right? Because I love everybody. I'm not loved by everybody, but that's not my problem. But when I think of enemies, I think of systems. I think of the enemy to my prosperity. I think about the enemy to my destiny. I think about the enemy to my children's livelihood. I think about the enemy, you know what I'm saying? It's a, yeah, come on, Shayla, come on, baby. Yeah, it's, deep, it's deeper than that. Oh, my enemies. Uh, so that means the people on the job, that they're going to bow down and, and grow up, honey. Please, honey, listen, I would rather deal with an enemy on a job every day because at least I know right? That no one is half the battle. At least I know we don't get along. It's okay. I can deal with that. But the Bible says, walk in wisdom among those that are without. I can do that. Got great wisdom. Thank you, Jesus. But the systems I need destroyed, I need these systems that I have seen operating in my family line. I need systems of divorce destroyed. I need systems of poverty and hardship. I need systems of cancer and diabetes. I need those systems destroyed. I want those systems to be my foot soon. I can deal with, uh, uh, old boy or old girl that is that's the lowest level of warfare it's people warfare <laughs> that's the lowest level of warfare the bible said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal you see that our level the minute you hear hater yeah because you know cousin so-and-so came job boo <laughs> the bible said pray for your enemies bless them a lot of these folks are in position just to push you to a greater place anyway the folks who have given me and I, i'm trying to close y'all yeah, know i'm trying but i'm a prophet I always have a lot of stuff to say, but I found the, some of my greatest human adversaries, listen to me, and I'm closing. Y'all get ready to give. Go ahead, Michelle, put the giving in the comment thing. I found that my greatest human adversaries were used by God to push me to places in my life I have never known I would have never known, period, and that I never knew existed, and I mean it. I can't say that. I, I can't say it like I mean it. You know what I'm saying? I, I can't express it enough. Some of the most, um, some of the most hateful, um, bitter, 
uh, just angry. There's another word. I can't, I can't even, I don't even have, I don't even keep those words in my vocabulary. That's why it's so hard. Um, Cause I don't entertain stuff like that. Right. If a person has a problem with you, that's their problem. <laughs> but some of them, some of my most, I don't know, folks that don't like me, praise God. They have been, I promise you, they have been a blessing to my life. And I literally mean that people that have done me wrong, like done me dirty, dirty, dirty wrong, have been a blessing to my life in ways they will never know. And so through that, that's how I, that's why I understood what Jesus said. Bless, pray for those that despitefully misuse you. Pray for them. Bless them and curse them. I, I understand. It makes sense to me now because like Joseph, you thought to do me harm, but God turned to my good. I learned the art of survival. I learned there's some folk in my life. I wouldn't be the prayer warrior I am today. I'm telling you, I would not be the prayer warrior I am today if it had not been for certain people. Like they forced me to pray because I didn't know what else to do. I didn't want to catch a case and go to jail. You know what I'm saying? I had to pray. I had to study because I had so much witchcraft and stuff. I had to learn how to fight in the scripture. I had to push myself to places in business and ministry because I didn't have finances. I didn't have people to support me. You understand know what I'm saying? So a lot of times we we, we pick, we put on, and I'm going to stop before I get into a whole nother message because I know it's late and I appreciate y'all's patience, but I, I had to get to a place where I push myself using some of the animosity that was projected toward me. And I, I thank God for it today. I'm not saying I wish it on anybody and I wish I hadn't have gone through it, but I thank God for the experience. I'm done. I'm going to quit. I'm going to come to a full stop. This is a great time to give. The given options are in the um, comment section. Many of you are have been faithful, faithful partners to the ministry. So you already have this in your phone or on your browsers, bookmark, what have you. Uh, we bless God for you. We are um, our ministry will be relocating within the next month. And so there are some needs there, praise God. And, um, you know, some, we're still processing through some things with that. A lot of work has to be done, um, on both sides. And so we just believe in God that you all will continue. I know there's a lot of controversy with tithing and offering, but let me tell you, the word of God stands people, whether it's the old Testament, new Testament is all God's word. Now you can pick and choose and, and, you know, you can do that. But as Joshua 24, 15, as for me and my house, honey, it's no question. It's no question. It's not even for me. And I've been a tither since I was 19 years old, right? So it's a no brainer. It's what I do. I don't even, and, and I, I posted it and I wanted to clarify what I said as I was telling people, I don't tithe anymore. It doesn't mean I don't tithe. It's just that for me, I don't even count 10%. Like for, I'm like, why would I just count 10% and say, here, God, I have a heart to give above and beyond that, right? And so I, I, I guess, well, maybe it's a tithe and offering, but for me, I don't even separate it. It's, it's all God's, number one, let's just say that. It's all God. He empowered you to get well. The strength you get up to go to that job, the mind you get to keep that job, who do you think gave that to you? Who helped you get through school? Who helped, who opened that door for you to get the job? Whether you like it or not, you prayed he gave it to you, Right? Who opened these? Who did that? Not you are sustained by the power of God. So do you really think I'm going to get down to a dollar and say, man, that's just too much. I can't. I don't know what they're going to do with it. I, honey, once I put that seed in the ground, I don't care what you do with it. I've done my part. I have sold it into the kingdom. I have given it back to God. Now, what you do with it, I ain't got nothing to do with that, boo. You know what I'm saying? Not my problem. All I know is God saw what I gave. That's all that matters. And, and yeah, we, we say the decrees and the promises and all of that stuff. And can I tell I'm just, I'm just that mature in my prayers that I don't, you know, I just, I expect it. I expect when I went to Vegas this weekend, my job paid for it. I, I hope people don't think that, please don't ever think that a church sends me on vacation. Now, sometimes the people of God do say, here, apostle, here's a hundred dollars for dinner. And here, and some of y'all are wonderful. Y'all so see, here's breakfast, here's coffee, here's tea. I ain't never had nobody pay for a vacation before. Uh, maybe somebody want to do it, let the Lord use you. But I'm saying, believe me, whenever there's a trip, uh, either my job, all these trips I got, my job sends me and all expenses paid. Now, whatever little stuff, little shows, yeah, that comes out of my personal economy, me and my husband, but we work, we work. My God, we work. And I've, God has blessed me to steward money well. I know how to save. I know how to, my credit is excellent. I have excellent credit, right? Because I'm a giver. So I don't, believe me, I never take a tithe and go to the beach with it. 
I never do that. Praise God. And so, you know, whenever there's, I'm traveling or whatnot, please don't ever let the devil tell you no lie. Oh, she taking the church money. If I get a car, it's the church money. No, ma'am, no, sir. My husband buys my cars. He buys them. Matter of fact, I, I've got cars we haven't even brought into the yard yet because we don't have space. Because that's what he does. Fix cars, buys them. That's what he does. Praise God. That God gave them to me. Praise God. That's my gift. Amen. And so we want to get into a position to where we can celebrate people for the blessings they have and say, hey, what is, what are you doing? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I like, God is blessing you. I mean, you go through stuff, but I can't tell because like God is really doing some phenomenal things in your life. And what was working? What are you doing? What are you not doing? How does that work for you? Right. So get into a place where you start to say, hey, let me just, if that's working for you. Let me find out. Let me tap into what you're doing. And it's just being obedient. Whatever God say, do, do it. Give. Don't give grudgingly. Well, you know, I'm going to give God 20. But boy, I tell you, my life, oh, gas, five, honey, then you might as well keep your 20. Because you didn't give it by faith. You didn't give it by faith. God can't honor it because he don't want trespass offerings. So praise the Lord. I'm gone. I love you all. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful, <laughs> uh, blessed week. And listen, this Wednesday, we're in our July series. We're still talking about... Um, I thought I had a copy of my book here. Um, the Six Obligations. If you didn't catch the Wednesday night, um, go back and look at that. Read ahead if you have it. And uh, we're having a good time in that Bible study. I love you all. Those of you in the house, thank you all. Continue to pray for us. Um, praise God. I'm going to get tested this afternoon. But, you know, it's God is good. Amen. By faith, all is well. Whether it's positive, negative, or whatever, all is well. We're going to still do what God has called us to do. Um, you guys be safe. We love you all. Be blessed. I just speak the word of God over your life. Let this word that has been spoken over you today fall on fertile soil. Not rocky soil, not sun-scorched soil, praise God, not soil that's so thin, birds can take it and, 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 and the fowler can take it, but this word is going to fall on fresh soil. And it's going to take root, it's going to bear fruit, and it's going to bring forth an abundant, abundant harvest. And you're going to start to see these, some of you are going to see, because I'm, I'm hearing God now, some of you are going to see this happen in your house first. You're going to see relationships just unfold. You're going to be like, man, I, it used to be, I used to walk in my house and feel like pressure and feel like, like a heaviness. Now it's like, whew, I can, I can enjoy my house. Some of you don't even have peace in your home. But when you tap into the revelation of this word, you're going to feel peace in your house where you're going to actually be able to lay down and sleep and get rest. Some people sleep and don't have rest, but you're going to have sleep and rest, y'all. God is good. He's a great guy. He's going to do this stuff for you. But you got to, you got to get into this principle. You got to get your heart right. Get that stuff out your heart. Father, forgive me, Lord God. I know I'm a sinner. Lord God, I know I have, I'm not a sinner. I know I have sinned. And I come short of your word. Father, wash me, make me clean, Lord God. Purge me with his, God, anything in my life that is, that and those of you in the house can go ahead and start um, praying. Those, um, Pastor, you can go ahead and lead the prayer. You know, Lord, for the areas in my heart. And don't say, Lord, if it's anything in my heart, don't lie. I, you know what? Come on, y'all. We gotta, some of us need to re-examine our prayer language too, because some of y'all just repeating stuff you've been hearing for years. And that stuff is not even biblical. If it's anything in my heart, you know what's in your heart. You know what's in your heart. The Holy Spirit has been telling you that all week, all day. Even in this message, God been telling you, you know, you got issue with her. Come on now. Don't play God like that. Lord, for the stuff that I'm dealing with, for the issues that I'm dealing with, I need your help. I need your, Lord, I need deliverance in this area. God, I need you to touch me. I need you to heal me in my body. And I need you to show me the, show me, God, my participation in the destruction of my own flesh. Show me the areas that I'm doing, Lord, that I'm doing wrong. Show me my wrong. Show me me. Today, I get on the altar. Today, God, I'm asking you, Lord God, to show me, Lord God, uh, it, it help me examine myself. Is there Christ? Is Christ being formed in me? Is he being formed in me? Or is Christ still the baby Jesus in the manger? And, and you know, what revelation of Jesus Christ do I have in me? How old is Jesus in me? <laughs> right? Come on. Is he being formed? Am I being formed into the full stature of a man, Christ Jesus? What does that full stature of the man, Christ Jesus, look like? He could handle rejection without being rejected. He could handle people coming and without turning around and flipping and going crazy. Am I there yet? Lord, if not, Lord, help me. Help my unbelief. Strengthen me in every weak area, God. I confess I'm a mess. I need you, God. I need you to help me. Show me the way. Show me, God. Deliver my mind. God, I got toxic thoughts. I'm around toxic people. The Bible said Lot was vexed with the filthy conversation. I'm around people that gossip all day long and I'm finding myself, Lord, in my mind. I can't even think clear. 
I'm around people, Lord God, with dirty hands. I'm around people, Isaiah said, I'm around people with clean, with filthy hands, filthy hearts. Filthy, purge me. And the Bible said the seraphim took the coal from the altar and touched his tongue, right? Some of us need God to take the toe, the toe, the tongues from the uh, from coals of fire on altar and God purge me. Teach me how to talk, God. So that when I call things out like Mary did, I don't even wait for you to respond because I believe by faith it's already done. I'm going to pray this prayer and then I'm going to start dealing with my circumstances and I'm going on about my day because I know you a God that don't lie. Your word don't come at you void. Lord God, you saying how you look, Lord, you got me, God. You got me. I'm not even going to worry about this no more. I can't pray and worry. I got to choose a side. So people of God, we love you. Have a blessed afternoon. And um, I pray this word has been a blessing to you. Praise God. Share it with somebody. And even if you don't share like the share thing, tell somebody about it. Maybe you need to re-preach it to somebody. Maybe you need to re-preach it to yourself. Amen. But we love you. God bless you. And we'll see you next time. Amen. <laughs>